Hi there and welcome to the QImage Ultimate instructional video for database tools. Database tools is a new option found in QImage Ultimate 2015.113 and higher. These database tools allow you to sync database information for archives and other media. So let's get started and I'll show you how this works. At some point we may have a reason to archive old pictures that we're no longer using but we still want to maintain a copy of those. So a lot of people use a DVD or a CD or even a flash drive to archive some old images. Well we still want to be able to search database information that we might have entered to be able to find which archive that's on and be able to get the photos off that archive. Here I'm showing a folder in 2015 January. Now that's as of the time of this video that's pretty recent but at some time in the future I may want to archive these. So what I would do is I would probably archive those to a DVD or in this case I'm just going to use a flashcard because it's easier for the purposes of this video. And this flashcard I've entered a volume label and labeled that flashcard SD card 2. So here what I'm going to do is first I'll show you some of the photos that I have on my C drive which is the main folder where I keep my images that I'm currently working on or recent images and I'll go to one of these folders here and you can see some red berries and I've added a rating for that one because it's the best of the bunch and down here I've put database information on this by clicking this I and I've entered red berries for that image. In this other folder I have an Xora that I shot in moonlight, a long exposure 30 second uh, exposure here and for that I've entered Xora in moonlight. And this third folder which is all I have in January so far I have some grass that I did a macro of and I just put grass on that. So on my C or working drive I've entered some database information in here and now let's assume it's sometime in the future and I want to archive this and get it off my C drive to save some space because they're old photos but I may have a reason to locate that archive even though I, I want to get it off my main drive. So this is really the folder that I want to archive. I, I might archive all of 2015, but again, for the purposes of the video, I'm just going to do this January folder and all subfolders underneath it. So I'll go to my archive here, and I can see that that's empty because I'm just starting this archive. Now let's go to the same folder. I'm just going to type it in. You can go through the directory tree if you want to. And there's the folder here. That's the same folder I'm looking at in QImage. So I'm just going to copy that and then I'll go back here to my archive drive and do a paste in here. And that will copy that folder and all the subfolders and images in it over to my archive disk, which in this case happens to be an SD card. Okay, that folder and all subfolders has been copied over to the archive. You can see the subfolders underneath and the raw directory that we were in and so forth on the archive. Now that we've created the archive, let's go to that archive in QImage and see what we have. Well, we have what we expect. We've got the January folder and underneath that we have the subfolders and because I copied everything in Explorer everything's here. Now let's go to this raw and we'll notice something's missing. There's no blue eye, the red berries is not there and in this folder uh, it's building thumbnails because it's the first time it's seen those on the M drive. There's no blue eyes here saying Xora and Moonlight for this picture and that's because we've copied those or burned a DVD outside of QImage, so QImage Ultimate doesn't know anything about that archive. It doesn't have any database information for that. All of the database information is back here 
on the C drive. So we can see that we have the database information on the C drive, but our archive does not yet have the same information. So let's fix that right now. I'm going to go back to the M drive. And here are the folders on the M drive. And again, there's, there's no database information there. So on the M drive, I'm going to go to the root directory on the M drive, and I'm going to drop down these database tools. And I'll get to these two top entries in a second. The, one that, the ones that we're interested in are these two populates. And these are really used to sync the database information for the M drive with similar information found on other drives, in this case the C drive. The first option here says populate user database info on the M drive using matches found in the same folder on other drives. So if you click this one, it'll pick up that blue eye that said red berries or grass and it will populate the database for the M drive with the same information. The second one here, the second populate, says populate all database info. And what that does is it'll do the same thing as the first one, plus when no folder description or creator is found, it'll use the folder name for the description and whatever creator you enter here. Let's just enter something there now. I'll put Mike in there because these are my photos. So these two different options, the first one just populates the user information that you've entered. And the second one populates that same user information. But when it finds a folder description that doesn't have any database information, it'll add the folder name to the description. And the reason you might want to do that is because on an archive, if you do a search, you might want to see all of the folders that are on that archive. So this second option basically gives you a way to tag each folder on that archive, even if you haven't entered any database information. So that when you search for, let's say, SD card 2, you can see everything that's on that SD card. Okay, this is an archive, so I'm going to choose this second one because I want to populate all of the user information in the blue eyes that say red berries and grass and all that. And I also want an entry for each folder description to show up. So I'll click that and it tells me that it found matches. These are the user matches that I've already entered in the database. And it tells me it's going to use the folder name for the description and it'll put creator and mic and this is just for folders when it finds no description that you've already entered. So I click yes to that and you'll see what happens if we go to the first folder here. You'll see that it put that folder name in the database. Same with this one. Put that folder name in the database because nothing was entered in there. It also put Mike in there because that's what I had typed. But more importantly when you go to this folder here you can see now that it found this rating and this blue eye on the C drive and it said okay I found this same file in the same folder structure on the C drive so it copied that rating and that database information over to the database information for the M drive. Now when we do a search and we do red berries and I'm going to search for both here so we'll get a list. You can see that it found red berries on the C drive, which we already knew was there, and now it's duplicated that on the archive. So now in the future, if you get rid of this C drive to make more space because you know you've already created an archive, this second entry here will tell you what archive media it's on so you'll know to put in SD card 2 before you go view that photo and after you remove this one the second one here is the only one that will show up and uh, keep in mind this this will work because this is database information even if you don't have SD card 2 or anything in that M drive 
it'll still find the database information and at that point you can say okay that's on SD card 2 because the volume name is in the brackets here and you'll know to put that SD card in and then you can go view that photo. Okay let's close this search and now notice here that we have some other options. These two populate options only populate database information if there isn't already database information on that archive. So sometimes if you do updates or you made a mistake or something like that, you might want to go back to the root of the M drive and then say remove all database information for that drive and all subfolders. When you do that, it'll clear out the database information for that archive and then you can repopulate. That's a way that you can overwrite. You basically remove first and then repopulate. Because again, if you use these populates, you may have entered different information on your archive than you did in other locations. And it won't overwrite that unless you remove it first. And if you do the remove, it does tell you there's database information for nine folders and three images and it asks you if you want to remove those. The top two options here just think of as quick sets to quickly set the description or the creator for the current folder only. So if I click this one it's going to put M in the description and if I click this one it'll put the SD card 2, which is the volume name, in the creator. Those are just handy tools in, in case you want to do that if you want to put the volume name in the creator. Uh, but keep in mind that these top two only work on the current folder as opposed to these bottom three which traverse the whole folder tree from this current folder, the destination, all the way down. Now if I go to just C colon photos, that's my main folder where I keep all of my photos that I've downloaded off the SD card. I've got each year and each month and date beneath that. So if you have a backup location like D colon photos where you duplicate your images, you may be working on your images on the C drive and entering database information for images on the C drive. And these database tools are also useful if you want to keep your backup in sync with your main drive. So I could have gone into some of these folders here on the C drive and entered database information for images. Then I can just go to D colon photos because remember you always want your destination in here. And I could do a populate or remove and then populate on the D drive and it'll pick up all of the information from the C drive and move it over to the database information for the D drive and, and sync those up. One final feature here that I wanted to show you is if you go to let's say a folder on the C drive this D here and the C have little pop-ups and it just tells you what it is. That's the description for that folder. This is the creator for that folder. But if you go to a removable drive, like an SD card or a DVD or a CD drive, these turn blue and that's just telling you that that's a removable drive. So it's just handy to be able to tell right away what kind of drive you're working with. If it's a white D or a C, then that's a fixed disk. And if it's a blue D, it's a removable drive. One final thing to keep in mind here is that if you've just created this archive and you've just copied some folders using Explorer from your C drive to this SD card, make sure you do your populate here to sync those up before you get rid of the information, the folders and the images on the C drive. That way it can find and populate your archive before you clear your space on the C or the D drive or wherever you're working. 
So these are the database tools and, and they just help you, number one, create archives and sync your database information so that the archive also has the database information that you're archiving. And secondly, it also helps you in a search because as I pointed out earlier, if you do a search in here and you just want to find grass, because you remember that you took a macro of grass. When you search, even if this SD card is not in the M drive, it could be in the drawer right now, you'll see that, okay, maybe you've deleted this C drive folder already because you know you created an archive, so only this second one will show up. You'll know to get SD card 2 out of the drawer, put it in there, and then you can double click on this and view the files and and work on the images if you want to. So I hope this covers the database tools pretty well and it allows you to sync up database information, create archives, be able to search and find your archives. And thanks for watching.